I'm engineer Ron Tomacruz. Today I'm going to talk to you about the DMV pre-trip. This is your first test of three tests on your Class B DMV license test. You must pass your pre-trip in order to move on to your next test, which is your skills. And if you pass your skills, you move on to your drive. Your pre-trip could be broken down into different parts. It could be exterior, undercarriage, engine compartment, as well as your in-cab operation or checks, which includes your air brake check. You're able to organize and arrange your tests any way you want. When you come down for your test, your rig will be sitting as this rig is sitting. Your cab will be down, so you will not take your test with your cab tilted, which means a lot of components are not going to be accessible for you to touch. Okay, this is where you got to be very descriptive. Okay, you're gonna tell me what you're checking, how you're checking, and what you're checking it with. Okay, so with that, just be very verbal and thorough in order to get the mark on your DMV test. This is a DMV test. It's not to be confused with the driver operator 1A pre-trip or your daily checks or your weekly checks or your monthly. Okay, we're focusing on our pre-trip for the DMV. Let's get started on this DMV pre-trip. You're going to come to an advantage point to where you could actually see underneath the rig. You're going to take a look at the overall appearance of your rig. Is there anything obviously hanging off your rig? Is it leaning to one side or the other? Indicating maybe a suspension problem. Then you're going to look at your ground. Okay, is there anything on the ground? Is it puddles, leaks, any bolts, hangers, belts, cables? And then you look, is there anything hanging underneath the rig that's not supposed to be there? Again, bolts, um, hangers, belts, cables. Now I'm going to walk up to the front of my rig. Remember that this is a DMV pre trip. Okay, so the paperwork we're filling out is DMV and we're actually working for a DMV. However, we are using a fire engine for your test. You will not be checking any of the fire, fire components or fire department components like emergency lights, pump panels, is there any fire uh, department equipment you're not going to check. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to start at the top of my rig. Okay, I'm going to look at my running lights. I'm going to make sure they're all securely mounted. I'm looking at that. All the lenses are all clean, clear, not cracked. Look for any condensation that might indicate leaks. Make sure they're amber in the front. Okay, all your lights, you're gonna, we're gonna check function of them later, making sure they turn on. Coming down from my lights, my running lights, I'm gonna look at my windshield. I'm gonna start with the weather strip all the way around my windshield. Make sure my windshield is intact or secure. There's no damage to my weather strip. Okay, no cracks. Then look at my windshield itself. Make sure that the windshield is clean, clear, no obstructions, no illegal stickers. From my windshield, I'm moving on to my windshield wipers. Okay, the windshield wipers, I'm looking at the arms, making sure that they're mounted securely and they're not bent. I'm looking at the blades, making sure the rubber on them are intact all the way across. You do not want to run your windshield wipers on a dry windshield. Okay, if your if your windshield wipers lock out in this position, you could actually operate them on a dry in, in this kind of situation. You also want to check your washer fluid hoses as well. You're gonna check the connections, make sure the, the hose itself is not damaged, bowls, cuts, leaking at all, make sure they're securely mounted. And then with that, you want to find your reservoir, your washer fluid reservoir, and check to make sure that you have adequate fluid. On this rig, your washer fluid is located through this axis right here. Okay. On your rig, it may be somewhere else. Here, it's underneath the captain's door. So be familiar with your rig at your fire station. I'm gonna move on to my lights. I'm gonna go to my left and right turn signals, my headlights, and low beams and high beams. 
okay? Um, we're gonna make sure that the lights themselves are all mounted securely. I'm looking at all the, the lenses, make sure they're clean, clear, not cracked, and looking for condensations may indicate leaks. I'm gonna do that for both sides. Then I'm gonna move down to my bumper area. If there's any equipment that you have on your bumper, you wanna make sure that everything is secure. Okay, now let's go around the corner. You gotta check your mirrors. You look at the mounts. Make sure your mirror is mounted securely. All your mirrors mounted securely. Then you gotta look at your mirrors themselves. Are they clean, clear, not broken? You're gonna open the door. Make sure it latches. Look at all your latching mechanisms. Your seals, your hinges. Make sure it operates smoothly. While you have your door open, you can check your seatbelt. Make sure your seatbelt latches and unlatches securely. Make sure it latches securely. Check your step. Make sure that your step is mounted securely. There's no missing bolts. And there's no damage. Underneath, right here that you can't see, and we will show you later, is your power steering box. There's a lot of components that are under underneath the cab, and later on we're going to show you the cab tilted and some of the components that I will be talking about. Okay, but your power steering box, you want to make sure that the box itself is mounted securely. All the hoses coming off your box, check the connections and the hose for bulges, frays, or leaks. Any U-joints, make sure the U-joints are uh, secure. There's no foreign objects in your U-joints. Then for all, coming off your power steering box is your pitman arm. All the steering linkage. So you got your pitman arm coming off the steering box. Going back is your drag link. Your drag link is connected to your steering ring knuckle or steering arm. There's an upper and lower. And then going across to the other tire is your tie rod. And throughout all those components, there's bolts, castle nuts, cotter pins that you want to make sure that are present, secure, and not damaged. And you, any other components, so I want to make sure they're not bent or damaged as well. Now I'm going to check my reflectors and any turn signal lights that I have on the side. Make sure they're securely mounted. And then look at all the lenses. Make sure they're securely mounted as well as clean, clear, and not broken. Okay, now I'm going to move down to my tire. Okay, I'm going to use the acronym Condition Inflation Depth, CID. Okay, so let's start with condition. Condition, I'm going to get an overall fill on the outside of my tire. I'm looking for any foreign objects stuck to my treads, any uneven wear, and any bumps that are abnormal. I'll check your sidewalls for any abrasions, cuts, or bulges. Okay. Um, inflation, there's different numbers out there. Be guided by your logbook, and it has to deal with the weight. Okay, but you are going to check your inflation with a t um, gauge. Now you're going to check your tire PSI. Okay, there's different numbers out there on different rigs, and it has to deal with weight. So make sure that you, you're familiar with your logbook on what your front PSI should be. Okay, so you're going to find your valve, make sure your valve is not damaged in any way. You're going to use a PSI gauge, make sure that it's at the correct PSI. Now moving on to my tread. Tread depth, you want to make sure that you measure it at this, at the outside, middle, as well as the inside, because okay, it could differ on how your tire wears, okay? And you wanna measure it to four thirty seconds on your gauge. Also on your treads, you don't want, you cannot have retreads on your steering tires. Now you're gonna move on to your rim, okay? You're gonna make sure that it has good top contact around your rim to the tire. Your bead is good. You're looking at any damage to your rim, is it round, not oval? Check out all your holes. Is there any cracks coming off all your holes? Any illegal welds? And moving on to your lug nuts. Your lug nuts are all mostly covered by beauty caps. Okay. On your tests, we don't expect you to take off 
each beauty cap, but I want we want you to cover. All right, you're looking at your lug nut. If you can see the threads, look at any indication that um, your lug nut has gotten loose is shiny threads or rust. Looking for any gaps between the rim as, and the, the nut itself. Looking for any cracks that are coming out of these bolt holes. The DMV allows out of 10 lugs like this, two to be missing. And if you have five lugs, one to be missing. I'm moving on to your hub. Again, this is a cover, but you're looking for leaks. Okay, any spidering from the wheel turning, it's flinging out grease or oil from the from the inside and from the middle. Okay, now we are going to go on components that are inside of this tire. Okay, this is where the test you're gonna start talking about components that are not you're not able to see. Okay, but however you gotta talk about what you're checking how you're checking and what you're going to check it with okay so let's get to it um, these components as well we're going to show you after and have the cab tilted and we'll give you a better visual of these components as well okay so move on to the brakes I'm going to start with the hose that comes air hose that comes into the brake canister looking at the connections look at the hose for bulges and frays or leaks same thing tightness of your connection and that goes into your canister making sure your canister is securely mounted there's no damage to your canister on the out on the other side of your canister is your slack adjuster your slack adjuster you're going to hear two numbers for it when the brakes release you don't want no more than one inch play in your slack adjuster and then your bi-monthly check you're going to have no more than two inch throw in that stack adjuster and that involves someone inside the cab pressing on the brake and then someone underneath measuring that throw of that rod okay from there it goes in your cat your calipers the caliper house your brake pads okay you're going to try to get access to your brake pads with a mirror and flashlight mirror and flashlight Okay, so on this rig, we're able to use one of these. On the newer rigs, it's gotten very tight and we have to use a dental mirror. So be familiar with your rig, get with your driver, see how the best access to your brake pads. But you are uh, measuring your brake pads to a quarter inch. And how we do that, typically we find the brake pad that touches your rotor, and then that's the brake pad was touching your rudder. Next thing that the brake pad is touching is the backing plate. Okay, so you're measuring the thickness of that backing plate to the pad. So when the pad brake um, wears down to the thickness of the same thickness of your backing plate, that's when we call our brakes in. What your uh, brake pad squeeze onto is your rotors. Okay, you're gonna check your rotors for cracks, also known as heat checks. A couple numbers associated with rotors, you don't want more than a inch length and then or a fingernail width wide. However, the ones that are really important are the ones that go all the way to the edge, or maybe all the way through. Okay, because if, uh, if you have something all the way through, it's going to make more damage. From our brakes, we're going to go a little more inside to our um, suspension. Okay, you're going to check your suspension mounts or the leaf springs on this rig. Um, your mounts hook up to your frame, checking all your bolts, make sure they're, they're all secure. And then the hangers, which are attached to your leaf springs. Your leaf springs, you can't have more than 25% shifted, missing, or cracked. Looking at all your shackles or straps. Going into the middle of your leaf spring, you're looking for your U-bolts and nuts. Make sure they're in good condition and not damaged. And then the other side of your U-bolt, you're gonna check the same components. Also, your shock. Make sure that it's mounted up top and bottom. Make sure it's mounted securely. There's no damage or dents in your shock and it's not leaky. Now, we're gonna check our rear door. Checking the latches, our latches. Go inside. 
make sure your seat belts latch and unlatch securely. On the door itself, you're looking at your latch, your weather seal, and your hinge. Make sure it operates smoothly and latches securely. Your battery box, some have access ports, this one can, has access right here. You're gonna open this, make sure your batteries are secure. Moving on to my step, make sure my step is secure. There's no damage, no missing bolts. Also, my mud flap, make sure that my mud flap is present and secure. I will be checking my compartment doors. Make sure that good weather stripping, hinges, and the latch appropriately. All my compartment doors are going to do the exact same. Okay. And we also want to make sure we have safety equipment. Okay, we're going to have a properly rated a fire extinguisher, at least three triangles. LAFD, we replace the triangles with cones and fuses, or if you have a breaker box, extra fuses. Okay. From here, I'm going to check my fuel cap, making sure it is on securely. I'm going to follow my fuel all the way down to the fuel tank. Okay, the fuel tank, I want to make sure it's secure. The straps are holding my fuel tank. There's no metal on metal, and there's no links or leaks or dents in the fuel tank. While I'm under there, I'm also going to check the frame all the way down. My look for broken welds, missing bolts, broken brackets. I'm checking all the longitudinal members as well as the cross members. While I'm down there as well, I'm also checking my exhaust from the motor all the way to where it comes out on the other side. I'm making sure that they're all secure, that all the hangers are secure. I'm looking for any leaks, which is indicated by carbon soot or rust. While I'm also under there, I'm also checking my drivetrain, drive shaft. Make sure it's not bent at all. Look at all the U-joints. There's no foreign objects in my U-joints. Make sure everything is secure and there's no missing bolts. Now we will be moving on to our tires. Using the same condition, inflation, and depth, CID. Okay, condition, you're gonna look at overall your tread. Is there any foreign objects stuck in my tread? Bulges, looking at the wear of my tread. Is it uneven from one side to the other? You have your inner duel, do the same as well. While you're back there, look at your inner duel. You wanna look between your tires and make sure there's no foreign objects stuck between your tires and looking at your tires themselves on the bottom make sure they're not touching may indicate low tire pressure. Moving on to your side walls. Your side wall you want to make sure that you're looking for abrasions, cuts, or bulges. And moving on to your inflation which is again consult your logbook on the PSI that your rear tire should be. It goes by weight and they are different from the on different rigs. Okay, you're gonna find your your valves, valve stem. Okay, the one that goes on to the inner dual, there is a valve stem that is an extension. It's pretty much just screwed on to the valve stem that's on the inside. So sometimes they get loose or sometimes they fall off. Okay, so you're gonna find your valve stem, make sure they're in good condition and present. If they have a cap or don't have a cap, you're gonna check to the correct pressure. I'm moving on to tread. You use again your tread depth gauge. Look on the outside, middle, on the inside of each tire to 230 seconds. It's different from the front. 230 seconds for DMV. On the rears, on non steering axles or, or tires, you could have retreads. Look at your bolt, your tires, and make sure they're they're the same type of tire as well. Move now from the tires to your rim. Make sure the bead or your contact around the rim itself is good. 
There's no damage to your rim. It's not oval. It's round. Looking at all your holes. Looking for cracks. Lug nuts. Take off your beauty cap. Again, we don't expect you to do that on your DMV test. However, mention that they're covered, but you want to make sure you get a, a visual of your lug nut. Make sure they're tight and present. If you can see your threads, if there's shiny threads or rust, it's indicate that there has been movement. Look at your lug nut and your rim. If there's a space between your nut and rim, it might have gotten loose. Look at all your bolt holes coming out, looking for cracks. Again, um, you can miss 2 and 10 or 1 and 5. Moving into the middle, you got your hub seal. This is covered again by a uh, cover. Okay, you're looking for leaks. Leaks back here would be oil and it'd be a mess on, on your rim. Okay, um, some of these actually have a hole covered by a breather cap, and in that hole, a lot of times there is a sight glass which indicates your fluid level if you if you have that on your rig or have access. Now moving from your tire to the inside. As we did in the front, we're going to go inside the tire and start with the brakes. You're going to check your hoses, make sure they're connected tight. Any leaks on your hoses, frays or, or bulges. Your, your hose hook connects to your brake canister, which is a bigger size in the rear. Make sure your canister is um, securely mounted. There's no damage or dents to your canister. On the back side of your canister is your stack adjuster. Again, your stack adjuster is going to be two numbers. With the brakes release, you want to have no more than one inch play. And then your bi monthly checks, 377, no more than two inches throw. Okay, that takes two people again. Then coming in on inside your caliper is your brake pads. Again, quarter inch is the same number. You're going to measure it to the backing plates. So find your rotor, get in there with your mirror and a flashlight, find your rotor, what's touching your rotor is your brake pad, and what's touching your brake pad next is your backing plate. So as your brake pad wears down and your pad is the same thickness of your backing plate, that's when we call it into our shops. Your rotors, you're looking for cracks or heat checks. Again, one inch length or fingernail width wide. Okay, but the ones that are really important are the ones that go all the way to edge or maybe all the way through. Moving on from your brakes, we're going to go to our suspension. Okay, look at your leaf springs, look at the mounts. Your mounts should be connected to the frame and look at all your bolts. Make sure they're present, they're not broken. You could use paint. All of our parts are painted. A lot of shifting in, in our bolts and stuff, cracks in paint. But look at your mounts, hangers, and your springs. No more than 25% shifted missing or crack. Looking at your shackles or straps. In the middle, you got your U-bolts. Make sure the bolts are in good condition, as well as your nut on the bottom. Make sure they're present, it hasn't gotten loose. And you're gonna do the same, your shackles and mounts on the other side of that leaf spring. Certain rigs, some rigs have shocks in the back, some rigs don't, but if you have a shock in the rears, you're going to check your mounting, the upper mount and the lower mount, make sure that they're secure. Any damage to your shock or any leaks. This is typically the fire station where we keep our fire extinguishers. So let's talk about safety equipment that we should have on this rig. Okay, we should have the properly rated fire extinguisher, reflective triangles, at least three of them. LAFD, we keep cones in the replacement. We also want to have bare electrical fuses just in case any of our electrical components go out like our lights or AC defroster so we have extra fuses. Now since I'm in my rear tire, also check my mud flap. Okay, making sure that my mud flap is secure and present. In the rear of your rig, you're going to check your lights. Your running lights, if you have some up top, all the way around. Look at all your lenses, make sure they're red to the rear. They're clean, clear, not cracked. Looking for condensation, it may indicate leaks. 
Also moving down to your reverse lights, brake lights, right here on the other side as well. Make sure that they're secure. And the lenses are clear, clean, clear, not broken, and condensation as well. Your license plate light, making sure that's secure, clean, clear, not broken. All the operations of these lights are going to be checked while you do your in-cab operation and you're going to have assistance from your grader. I'm also going to check my rear running board or my tailboard or step. All right, now I'm going to step and get a better view of the back of my rig. Okay, from this vantage point, I'm going to take a look at the overall appearance of my rig. I'm going to make sure it's not leaning to one side or the other, maybe a suspension problem. I'm going to check underneath the rig itself to see if there's anything hanging, like belts or mounts. And then on the ground, I'm going to look for any leaks, puddles, any bolts or mounts that may have fallen off the rig. From this vantage point as well, I can see my fuel tank. I'm looking at my tank, making sure that there's no dents, leaks, or damage to my tank, and I can see the straps and the straps make sure that they're secure and present. Mud flaps, make sure they're not torn and that they hang down at least two thirds of the way. And I can see between my duels, I'm gonna make sure there's no foreign objects between my duels, as well as the tires not touching, which may indicate low tire pressure. Okay, on this side, you're gonna do exactly the same as the other side. You're gonna check all your compartments the same way. Make sure they're secure. Mud flap, no torns, secure. There's no damage to your mud flap. Tires, CID, rims, lug nuts, hub seal, spacing between your duals and your inner tire as well. And then you got your brakes, hoses, canisters, brake pads, and rotors. And then your relief springs, mounts, hangers, shackles, or straps, U-bolts, and all the way through mounts, shackles, hangers as well. Moving on to compartment doors, again secure. Your exhaust comes out on this side. Okay, again looking at security and hangers of your exhaust. Some rigs out there have deaf fluid. This is a good time to check your fluid, make sure your fluid is high. And if you have any equipment on the exterior right here, you wanna make sure that it's secure, as well as your step. Make sure all your compartments are secure, your rear door is secure, and your battery access is secure. Again, with your batteries, you may have access, it may not have access. Okay, but if you have access right now, like this rig, check it and then check your step make sure it's secure mud flap and then your tire again CID on tire rim lug nuts hub seal on the inside you got your brakes hoses canisters slack adjuster brake pads rotors and then on the inside is on the very inside is your leaf springs Okay, mounts, hangers, shackles, U-bolts, shackles, mounts as well. Okay, then you're gonna look in the front, make sure this door is secure. We have tilted the cab to go over components that are tested on your DMV pre-trip. Keep in mind that your DMV pre-trip is different from your driver operator 1A pre-trip. It's different from your daily checks, your weekly checks, as well as your monthlies. So DMV pre-trip is what we're focusing on. Now let's review some of the components that I've already talked about. Okay, let's review the power steering box and linkage that we talked about earlier. Okay, your steering column comes to the floor from your steering wheel right here and it comes through a couple u-joints universal joints you check these joints free of debris checking all your bolts and nuts make sure they're all secure 
U joint goes into your power steering box. Looking at all the bolts and nuts, making sure your power steering box is secure. All your hoses coming out of your box. Connections are tight, not leaking, as well as your hoses, bulges, frays, leaks. Connected to your power steering box is the rest of your linkage. You have your pitman arm and your drag link. And throughout here, you got your castle nut and cotter pin. As we follow our drag link down, our drag link connects to our steering ring knuckle or steering arm. This is our upper as well as our lower. On our steering arms, we got these rubbers. You want to make sure that these are not ripped and these boots and in good condition. Connected to your lower steering arm or steering ring knuckle is your tie rod. It connects this tire to your tire and your offside. Again, every time you come across a nut or castle nut or cotter pin, you want to make sure that the cotter pin is present because that is preventing that nut from moving. Now we're going to talk about our brakes. We're going to follow the path of air travel. Okay, the hose comes from our air compressor. You're going to check your hose as well as your connections. Your hose should not have any bulge, frays, or leaks on your connections. Your hose is connected to your canister. You want to make sure that your canister is securely mounted and this strap is secure. On the back side of your canister is your slack adjuster. You're going to look through all the components, all your cotter pins and pins. Make sure that your slack adjuster is securely mounted as well. I'm talking about your slack adjuster. Remember there is that one inch play. With the brakes release, you shouldn't have more than one inch play. And then your bi-monthly or your 377s with someone in a cab pressing on the brakes, you should not have more than two inches throw of this rod when it, when it comes out. Okay, And so there's going to be someone down here measuring the throw. From here, you're going to look at your brake pads, which are in your, inside your calipers. Your brake pads, you're going to find your rotors. What's touching your rotors is your brake pads. And the next thing that's on your brake pads is your backing plate. So you're looking to compare the thickness of your pad to your backing plate. Now when your pad wears down to uh, the same thickness of your backing plate, that's when we call it into the shops, which is a, a quarter inch. And that's going to be um, using a mirror and flashlight. Again, access to your brake pads are going to be different on a lot of rigs. Okay, on this one right here, we're going to be using that rectangle tri um, telescopic mirror. On newer rigs, it's pretty tight and you're going to have to use a dental mirror. Get with your drivers and see what the best access to your brake pads at your fire stations are. Moving on from my brake pads, brake pads squeeze onto the rotors. The rotors, you're looking for heat checks. Again, you may hear no longer than one inch, no wider than a fingernail width. But the cracks that we're really worried about is the ones that go all the way to the edge and all, go all the way through the rotor. Now let's talk about your front suspension. This rig you're looking at has leaf springs. At your fire station, you may not have leaf springs in your front. You may have airbags, you may have TAC4 suspension, upper and lower A-arms. But today we're going to focus on a DMV check, which is leaf springs. Okay. We're going to start with our mounts, making sure that your leaf spring is mounted to your frame securely, looking at all your nuts and bolts, making sure they're on secure. Look at your hanger and your leaf springs themselves. On your springs, you're going to take a look at this part right here where they wrap around for cracks. And then you'll look overall. You cannot have more than 25% shifted, missing, or cracked on your leaf springs. Looking at all your shackles or straps, moving down to your U-bolts. 
making sure your U-bolts are in good condition, there's no cracks or damage. Also, the nut that's on the bottom, make sure that's present and not damaged. You're going to follow that along to this mount on the other side and shackles and hanger. Shock absorbers, if your front suspension has shock absorbers, you're going to check the mounts, the front mount, as well as your bottom mount. Look for any damage or dents in your shock and any leaks. Now we're going to get into engine components on that is gradable for your DMV test. Okay, we're going to start with your fluids. Your power steering fluid it has a dipstick, hot and cold. Your oil dipstick, you check the fluid level, how it looks. Checking your caps, making sure that your caps are on tight. For these components I'm pointing to, they are located in different places on different rigs. So be familiar with where the locations for your fluids are on your rig at your fire station. The next fluid I'm going to check is my coolant. On this rig, it does not have a sight glass, so you would have to open up your cap and look down in the neck to see the level of your coolant. Never mix colors of your coolant. Moving on to hoses. In general, when you come across a hose, whether it be an air hose, fluid hose, looking at the hose itself for bulges, frays, and leaks, all your connections, there's a lot of different connections. There's screw-on connections, there's press-on connections, there's straps. Making sure that all those are tight, they're not leaking. And then I'm going to go on to my components. I'm going to check my air compressor. Air compressor again, hoses come off my air compressor. That is belt driven. Then I'm going to look at my water pump, which is hard to access. It's in the middle, which is again is belt driven. And then the other side, you're going to look at your alternator, which is also belt driven. I'm going to, all those components are going to make sure that they're secure. All the bolts are on securely. There's no leaks. On the alternator, look at all the wires. Make sure there's no bare wires and all the wires are all securely mounted. On your belts themselves, there's direct belts and there's serpentine belts. You want to check for deflection. And you're going to hear for your DMV, you want to say three quarter inch. You're going to get between two pulleys and check the deflection, three quarter inch. You may hear half inch for LAFD. Serpentine belts, you just want to make sure that you don't have much, too much play with your tensioner. You may pull more than a half inch or three quarter inch. But you're looking at your belts for frays, separation of the belts, or any damage to your belts at all. Making sure they're in line on all the pulleys, rotating them and making sure that there's not too many cracks. I hope this video has helped you prepare for your commercial Class B pre-trip. We encourage you to get with your drivers at your fire stations doing your dailies, weeklies, and monthly checks to get more familiar with these components and more. Remember, this we only touched on a couple items, being this is a DMV pre-trip. Good luck with your test.